as cunning as a fox who's just been appointed Professor of Cunning at Oxford University. Hello, welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we have um, a real pleasure actually. Uh, when Mark and I started this channel, we had no idea it would be this um, big, I suppose, and popular. And we do get quite regular emails from viewers saying that we've inspired them to create their own puzzles. And some of the puzzles we obviously see, and some of them um, get rave reviews. And Eric Fox uh, created the puzzle you can see on your screen. Um, and our testers loved this puzzle. They thought it was brilliant. Well worthy of a Sudoku Grand Prix was one of the comments I got back from them. Um, and the other comment that I had was that this would be a perfect puzzle for somebody who was relatively new to Sudoku variants and who wanted to sort of cut their teeth on a variant Sudoku. Then this apparently is a very good and nice example. It's not monstrously difficult. So that might encourage some of you um, who are relatively new to the form to have a go. Um, now, before I go through the rules of Eric's puzzle, just to mention, if you do watch the channel and enjoy it, please do subscribe. Um, it helps with our marketing. And there's a button just there. Where is it? Oh, here. If you press that button, it, uh, you subscribe. It doesn't cost anything at all. And it just uh, means you get notified when we make new videos. Um, and on the subject of videos, if you haven't watched yesterday's video or you haven't tried the puzzle from yesterday's video please do it was a masterpiece i was left stunned by it i was trying to explain to my wife the beauty of this puzzle she thought i was absolutely crazy but honestly it it, it was so jaw-droppingly beautiful the patterns in the sudoku that you must you really must try it um and yeah so i'll put a card up actually so you can find it easily um, now, how does this puzzle work? Well, let's have a look. We've got two marked diagonals. Now, when you have a marked diagonal in a Sudoku, that means that as well as putting the one, numbers 1 to 9 in all of the boxes, rows and columns, you also have to put the numbers 1 to 9 on the diagonal. So that's an extra constraint. And then we've also got these grey areas. Now, these are cloned areas, which means that whatever we put if we put, say, a digit in that square, let's say we put a four in that square, then its counterpart in this shape, this one, would also have to be a four. So these shapes have to be exact matches in the final solution. Um, and with that, uh, let's have a go. Now, if you want to have a go, as usual, you just click on the link under the video that will take you to our web page where you can play along on whichever device takes your fancy. And now let's get cracking and see how to do this puzzle. So as usual, we'll start off by pencil marking if we uh, if we can in boxes. If I can lock a number into two or three positions, I will make little notes to remind me of that. Although I'm not getting very far with this one using that method. Sometimes in diagonal Sudoku, it's worth um, also looking at the diagonals, obviously. But when you do look at the diagonals, I'm looking at this diagonal. Um, make sure you're not focusing on what's on the diagonal, which would be difficult in this puzzle because there's nothing on the diagonal at the start. But what is not on the diagonal? So my eyes are drawn to these sevens, for instance, because these sevens mean there's no seven on the diagonal in this box and there's no seven on the diagonal in this box. So the seven must be on the diagonal in that bottom left box there. And actually, look, we can look at six and nine as well. So again, now we need to put the number six and nine on this diagonal. And you can see we're only going to be able to put it in the center, in the central box there. OK, now let's check the rest of the diagonals. Not seeing anything else. Our nines here can place a nine in one of those two squares. Now, that's the most interesting pencil mark we've found so far because it's on the clone shape. So the moment we write this in, we can write pencil marks into the equivalent positions on the other shape down here. Now, that's, oh yes, this is nice because now these nines interact. They force a nine into one of those two squares. And now if we look at these two rows, look, we've locked nines into row four and row five in this box. 
We've locked nine into row four and row five in this box. So we know there can't be any more nines in row four or five. For instance, if I try and put a nine there, I'd have to put a nine here and a nine here. Well, that's not gonna work. That's gonna repeat nines in the row. So this square and this square cannot be nines. This one, that's a nine. Now, look at that. Now we've got, we've managed to lock nine off this diagonal. So none of these squares on the diagonal can be a nine because there's already nines in these boxes. So the nine must be on the diagonal in the bottom right hand box. And in fact, we already know it's in one of these two positions. So it must be that top one. So we get a digit and we get a digit in the cloned area. So, uh, so this nine means that this must be the real nine over here. This nine sees that square, so that's not nine anymore. This is nine. And we can pencil mark some nines. Those two squares must be nines and these two squares must be nines. And we've got five digits now in column nine. So we need to place one, two, Ah, yeah, so we need to place one, two, four, and six in this column, but we have a one here and a one here. So where does a one go in this column? It can only go in the top square. The one sees this one on the diagonal. So this is not one, this is the one. Which places a one in the clone up here because of these ones interacting. So we can immediately drop down to this, these two squares and pencil mark ones. So there's ones up here now on the other side of the clone and that's these ones interacting. So we, again, we must make sure we do the same thing over this side. Okay. So what do we do next? Well, one thing we can do, look, look at this eight. If we look at column seven of the grid, this eight is ruling out um, eights from all of these four clone squares. Now that means we can come across here and know there cannot possibly be an eight in any of those four positions. So that square must be an eight. It's the only square left an eight can go into. Um, yes, we can, we can do the same with fives. This five operates on this side of the clone. Rules out a five from the sort of spine of the clone here. So there's no five in any of those squares. Now that means that the five must be in one of these two positions because we need a five in column seven. Well, it can't be in this one, so it's got to be here. Uh, just one second while I try and spot the next useful thing. So probably, yes, we can do, let's look at these squares. These have got to be two, four, and seven in some order. That one can't be seven. So if we know these three squares are two, four, and seven, we know these three squares are two, four, and seven. So we must pencil mark that in. The top one can't be seven. The middle one can't be two. Therefore, this middle one can't be a two. And now we've got eight digits effectively look in, um, in column seven. So this square must be a three. Now that means that there's no three in either of those squares. There's no three here. So, let me just, I'm just looking at threes for a second. Let's just carry on looking at threes and see if we could. Getting some pencil mark threes now. In fact, where can three go on this diagonal? 
let's just let's just look at this where can three go because this three and this three immediately rule out those squares they can't be three this can't be a three this can't be a three this can't be a three because of this three so we're left with ah now this is very nice this square look cannot be a three because if it's a three its cloned equivalent would be a three which is this square and that sees a three directly so this is not a three so now three can only go in this square um now in placing that three i displaced a one so that gives us three one one like that now we can immediately now copy these down into the clone so that must be three one one that forces a three up there look we've got quite a lot of in fact have we done all the three no we haven't done all the threes so we can pencil mark threes down here and we can pencil mark threes at the top now let's just have a, another look at the clone these two squares have got to be two and four now to complete the box ah now now this is interesting because this two and four see these two clone shapes which means neither of these two squares can be a two or a four now if we look at this row and possibly the one above it but this row is interesting because this square well if we look we've got one three seven eight nine so we need two four five and six to complete this this row well we know this square cannot be a two or a four so it must be a five or a six but it can't be a six because initially you remember we pencil mark sixes on the diagonal here into one of these two squares so this square is a five which means that square is a five now this five locks a five into one of those two squares and that makes a five seven pair on the diagonal what a love it's a lovely puzzle isn't it it really is this is a two so let's just take a quick look again so now we've got all sorts of things going on I'm having trouble actually focusing on just one of them because so there's I think there's so many opportunities to make progress here let's check this this row though we need two four six and seven but we know this square can't be a two or a four so this square has to be a six or a seven and this square also has to be a six or a seven therefore I was hoping that would lead to an elimination um, I'm not sure that it does two four six seven so if we have a look at this diagonal now you can see with these two squares we haven't placed a two on it yet so the only place a two can go on this diagonal because of this two is there that makes that a four which is in the clone which makes this a four now that's a seven and that's a six yes this is it now seven six here this is a two and we finished the cl oh no we haven't quite finished the clone we've very nearly finished the clone um, this square must be a two to complete the box now what digits have we not put on the diagonal yet we've not put on four and six so we can now use this four to disambiguate that where can six go in this box down here it can only go here that means this square must be a four these two squares have got to be seven and eight in some order there's a seven on the diagonal so eight and seven in that order the seven fixes the seven and the five on the other side and this square is going to be the final that must be a two and now look we've done both diagonals now this square must be a six to complete the row which means this is a six on the clone this is a seven to complete the row this is a seven by normal sudoku 
These two squares are 6 and 8. There's a 6 there. And I think we're on the home straight now. Um, what a, I mean, just gorgeous. Gorgeous setting. Thank you, Eric, for sending this to us. Really have enjoyed solving it. Assuming I can finish it, of course, without making a mistake, which I nearly did there. Um, right, these two squares are 4 and 5. Let's try not to make a mistake. Um, this square we can write in. That's got to be... Goodness me, scanning's going to pop here. It's got to be a 2. That means this is a 2, this is a 3. That fixes a 3 at the top. Uh, we still need a 4 in the top row, look. So that's going to be a 4. And these two squares have to be 8 and 9 in some order, which we don't actually resolve yet. But knowing that this square must also be an 8, 9 to complete the column, and seeing that 8 there, that's going to help us figure it all out. 9, 9, 8. This must be an 8. And these two are going to be 4 and 5. And that's, I hope, yes, how to do it. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments as always. And we'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And I think there's going to be a crossword video tomorrow morning if you look out for those. See you soon. As cunning as a fox who's just been appointed Professor of Cunning at Oxford University. <laughs>